So as far as conversions go, my opinion is is that by putting this stock on, you're saving a lot of money, and you're only gaining or not gaining two inches of difference in length of pull. Not even necessarily overall length of firearm, but length of pull because your trigger guard would be up here, which means your pistol grip would be here. But in AKs in general, if you're not familiar guys, you basically, if you're an average height American male, they are small firearms to you. And that two inches is going to really do almost nothing but help you acquire your sight easier, easier and feel more comfortable to you. So I don't see this as any major uh, deficit. And the other change that I would make instead of changing everything else is I would get, I think it's by Carolina or North Carolina Industries, a magazine or Saiga bullet guide. And it, this is not an expensive part. It's only about 8 to $15 maybe. And all you do is drill it in right in front of your um, feed ramp. And there's perfect directions from the manufacturer on it. It's really nothing. It's it it equates to like uh like a push pin, like a like a thimble or something. It's it's just a bump is all it is, is a bump after all said and done. And that helps bump it up and guide it into place how it should be. And you make one other change right here on the magazine release. Well actually not right here, it's up here where it catches. And you just file that down just a slight bit, I mean like an eighth of an inch or less. And then standard AK magazines will fit in here. They'll start snapping shut and they'll guide bullets in properly. That way if you're an SHTF guy, then you won't be stuck with these Saiga specific magazines. You can pretty much find anywhere the most common magazine and the most common firearm in the world being a standard AK magazine will then fit in your Saiga rifle with a little bit of filing right here and a bullet guide right here. That's the minimum you need. The other thing is basically aesthetic and the T6 stock here. It's also really nice functionally I think to have the pistol grip. The forend I could care less about. Um, just remember to double check all parts after you fired a few times. My forend it has one screw right here. It started to come loose. Not a big deal. Wouldn't have kept the firearm from functioning. But it's one of those things. Just you know, check your firearm over after you shoot it the first time. While I'm here on the stock, it does have. We still have our sling swivel up here. Uh, sling mounts, and we now have a sling mount back here. The original stock came with a sling mount too. And I did not have a sling, or so I thought, until I got real desperate. And really guys, if you walk around in public anywhere with a firearm, you need to have a sling with a rifle so it's not brandishing a weapon. And sure enough, I had a luggage strap. And you may call it cheap, whatever, it works. And until I find something better, significantly better, uh, there you go. And I even have my little black lifeguard whistle attached to it. And it's a six position stock. And one other change as I'm moving forward here, the dust cover, uh, when you pull this uh, spring back, there is a button right on top of here. Usually there's not a button. It's not a big change, but it's a small enough change to where a regular dust cover might not necessarily fit on here. It's just another small little intricate change. There's a little button. Not a big deal. There's a scope rail right here. Some 
AKs or AK variants have them and some don't. Usually the Saigas do. You can fit a quick a quick detach scope mount rail that you can see under the rail, the iron sights, and either comes with a single pick rail here or a second one here. They cost anywhere from twenty five to up to even maybe a hundred dollars depending on the quality and whether they're quick detached or not. I think it's a great option for this firearm. This is said to be one of the most accurate AKs that you can buy. Um, maybe because it's well made, the chrome line barrel, uh, the action is especially smooth on it. Um, they do make dust cover replacements here. My opinion on these and I really haven't fired them yet, is that they say that it's not a solid mounting point for scoping. And I would say for scoping, maybe so. But for a red dot that you're going to use at around 100 yards, maybe not. But you don't have to worry about that on the side guy because you've got the quick detach rail here. You definitely want to buy that and get it if you want to scope this out. The regular sights on it are standard iron sights on front, standard iron sights in the rear, leaf iron sights, I think they call them, leaf elevation. They come one to three mark, and that's going to be 100 meters to 300 meters. Um, good luck shooting out to 300 meters. I call AKs very good 100 meter rifles, and maybe up to 200 with a good. One thing to mention on the safety of this rifle, on the other side here of the bolt, there is a bolt pulled open, and it is not on the safety mounted. It's an internal bolt pulled open. And really, guys, before you get too happy about that, let me just explain how it works on this rifle. The bolt pulled open is internal, and it will make the bolt stay open upon the upon the file the final round firing from these magazines. But when you go to release the magazine, the bolt hold open will release and the bolt will move forward. So the only real world application for this that I can come up with is that at a range or an overly regulated range in my opinion they may require you to have your bolt held open and you should be able to go explain well it's an AK it's not going to stay open but on this one it will and you won't have to use a, cha a chamber flag but when the last round goes and your mag empties it'll stay open but when you release the magazine it will shut now that's not to say that you can't reload a magazine you can reload a magazine with it shut or open doesn't matter. And as far as doesn't matter, we're really only talking about the difference between pulling back a bolt a quarter inch for it to slap forward or pulling it back. So that's really not a big deal. But I just want to clarify some people that wonder about the bolt hold open on the internal ones. Uh, some of them come on the safety, and I'm not sure about those. But uh, it's not a whole lot of benefit to you except for at the, except when we're talking about at, at the range. So that pretty much let me show you real quick too. This is the most common ammo. Full ammo, 7.62 by 39. This is what you're gonna find for about 500 rounds or anywhere from 112 to 120 dollars. There's a couple different variants of this, maybe costing just a hair more if you get soft nose or something. But basically there's no reason to buy anything more expensive or nicer than this. It's steel case. It works fine. Uh, AKs eat these things up, so do SKSs. And the one other kind of round that you're going to get usually something oh so much nicer like Remington it's basically going to have a brass case the only reason I have this 
is because I had an FKS years and years ago, and these things didn't fuck so much way back then. But even though this like this round here is like 20 years old, I still save these for uh, potential hunting purposes. Uh, that would be the only reason. Otherwise, you use tall ammo, or maybe a tall wolf ammo, or basically anything like that. And one last thing while we're talking about rounds, the only time I've ha ever had any kind of AK, any AK or SKS misfire, is this bullet that I saved right here. It's on my right, right here. And you see how much smaller it is. It's still an AK round. What it is is, is it's called bullet setback. And it is so set back into the chamber that it is that much smaller. And it actually caught on the feed ramp. So this is something called bullet setback. It's when the bullet actually pushes in so far that it won't fire. And this did not happen from my firearms or chambering. This came from the factory like this. This is why you're supposed to look at ammo. And I wondered why this wouldn't chamber when I was loading up a new magazine. And I looked at it and sure enough, it's because it was set back so far that there's no way that it could actually load. That's called bullet setback. It's pretty much the only way that an AK is not going to feed. Uh, any other ammo, regardless of where it comes from, USA, Russia, Ego, doesn't matter. It's going to work in your age. So again, that's my review of the Sega or Saiga Ismosh camera 7.62 by 39. I forgot to mention the price on this. Um, the reason I forgot to mention the price on this is because it's so irrelevant. This is such a high quality firearm. Um, but in today's market, in 2012, it's going to cost you just over $300 at maybe $339. You can't beat that. You want to get into the rifle game, the AK game at all, I would strongly suggest that you don't buy something that looks cooler if you don't know your AKs, you might find something just like this that is not a Polish AKMS that costs twice as much as this other Saiga behind it, but is something called a Wasser or a Wasser 10 that might be in the same exact neighborhood as this firearm right here. Right here. And I guarantee you that this is a superior firearm as long as you're just not looking for standard AK looks and wood. That being said, I don't blame you at all. Owning a firearm like this that's an AK, you may always be wanting another AK that has wood on it, but that's part of the fun of AKs, guys. So let me just wrap this up. This is the Rums Living Channel, and I thank you all for tuning in. Have a good evening.